what would you do if you want a 1500 horsepower LS engine? Horsepower LS engine, what would you put it in? Where would, it Beetle. Where would you race it? It'd be a salt flat car. Okay, that's not an answer I was expecting. Yeah. Like, you got three seconds, narrow it down, one car. Something like an old, one. old Mercedes or something like that. What? Okay, Maddie, what would you put it in? Old Bentley. <laughs> an old Bentley. <laughs> right here at the PRI show, live on the show floor, we're going to be building this LS engine to give away on Engine Lab. First things first, let's go ahead and wrap this right now. What's up, Vinny? Yeah, how are you? Good, we got you? some parts. Got some parts for you. Let's get this thing built. So Vinny is going to be our engine builder today from LME. Um, he can tell us a little bit more about what we're going to be doing and uh, tell us a little bit about LME's background here. Well, LME has been around for a very long time. Um, Brian and Pecos, you know, they started the business and it's just flourished ever since. I've been at LME for about eight years. I couldn't count how many of these I've built. So Vinny, I think you have a good starting point, but I do think you're gonna need a couple more parts. Luckily, I know they're around here at PRI, so I'm gonna head out, pick some up, and then I'll come back in a little bit. All right, we've cruised through a couple of the aisles, picked up some parts that we need, stopped by some of our booths. These are a couple of the components that they're missing over there. We've got everybody like Callie's, ATI, ARP, Molly, Manly, so all of the parts, but I think Vinny's probably waiting on me, so we should probably hurry up and get back. All right, Vinny, I got the parts. We've got some missing pieces here. Um, what, are you, what are you doing? We're about to check main bearing clearance, pull the caps off so and... I'll go gather stuff, you get back to work here? Yeah. Okay. Obviously, with engines, the number one priority is cleanliness. You know, make sure there's no manufacturing defects or burrs on the bearing. Make sure there's no nicks in the mains even after we machine them. You know, make sure everything is going to be right. But that's also why we double check every single clearance in the engine, is in case something like that happens, we'll catch it. So you'll see I'm torquing these in a sequence because Especially factory LSs, the blocks shift quite a bit. So if you don't torque them in the same sequence every time, the bearing clearances will actually change. This is my micrometer, two to three. So we're gonna set up our dial bore gauge to uh, check our main bearing clearances. 2.5580. We always check 90 degrees crank journals, check out around, check taper on the, the journals. The more consistent you can get everything, the, the longer your engine will last. On an iron block running this much horsepower, we try and open them up a little bit, keep them a little bit looser, you know, in case the crank flexes or something like that. All right, Benny, I got more parts. I see you have the main caps off. Yes, I just you... got done checking in very fast. Okay, so that part's all good to go. Of course. Time for a crank, right? Hey, are you doing it? No, I'm I gonna do it. You do. You're gonna make me use all my muscles to pick this up and put it over there. Yeah, why not? Okay. Okay. All right, I mean, I came back, laid the crank, got the hard job done. So, how about I go do something else and you get back to work? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Right now, I'm just kind of setting the thrust a little bit, make sure it has some. moment we're checking the end play on the crankshaft we, should, we typically shoot for a minimum of, of about three thousand so um, a little bit left to do but bottom end crank laid we did a good, we did a great job today. We sure did. We did, man. <laughs> okay, so what I'm thinking is every time I disappear, a lot of work gets done. Yeah, we'll get the work done when you disappear. Okay, but you can disappear now too. So you want to call it a day? Sure. Pick this back up tomorrow? Yeah. See if any elves work on it tonight? That'd be nice. Okay, perfect. <laughs> tomorrow it is. 
All right, PRI, day two. We're out on the show floor. Pretty sure Vinny's over there working. At least he is supposed to be. Hopefully he's making progress. But before I stopped by, checked out his progress, wanted to go ahead and pick up this fast intake manifold um, because hopefully we're going to be at the point of putting that on sooner rather than later. So let's go check on Vinny, see what he's up to. What's up, Denny? Good morning. Good morning. Check out what I picked up. Got the intake ready here. Um, I see your gapping ring. You just got done gapping rings. We're done gapping rings. Are we about to drop pistons in? We're throwing them in right now. Oh, sweet. Number one, ready to go. All right, Vinny, I am going to go ahead and pop this one in. Somebody's going to judge me for my hammer holding, but that's how I really do hold it. I can't, I have no. All right, Vinny, I think I've done the brute of this work now. Um, <laughs> do you want to go ahead and put the cap on? Put the cap on. <laughs> we'll let you wrap it up from here. Looks good. We're about zero deck. All right, pistons all in, good to go. Good to go. Okay, so then, Next, nice comp cam here. So this is 248, 264, and it's uh, 651, 630 on the lift. Um, we use that lift typically to be more reliable. I mean, you don't have to run a whole lot of spring pressure on it, and uh, it'll still make 1500 horsepower. So the first thing we'll do when we check Cam timing is obviously you set your pointer to zero degrees on the crank. So we rotate the cam until it hits max lift and then we'll back it off about 50 thousandths. And then we'll take the number at 50 before and 50 after top on the lobe. And then uh, we'll find the average and that'll give us our intake center line. So right now we're centering up the oil pump body on the crankshaft to make sure that all the uh, oil pump gears have the correct clearance. 18 foot pounds on all, pretty much all eight millimeter bolts on LS. And these little guys are 90 inch pounds. We will be using a double keyway on this crankshaft, being that it's a supercharged engine. Probably gonna be turning it pretty quickly. So what we're doing here is we just put a little dab of silicone in the corners just to help it seal up, because nobody wants a leaky brand new engine. We got this little adapter we made at the shop to make sure that the, that the uh, cover is centered on the crank when we bolt it down. Number one thing on LS stuff is making sure that the covers are level with the oil pan rails so that everything seals up correctly. These ARP bolts will be torqued to 230 foot pounds. I like to put a little bit of silicone on the front and back of the washer so that no oil leaks out from, from the balance room.
looking so good. Well, thank you. I think I was gone for like three hours. It got busy out there, I'm sorry, but um, looks like you did good work. They went together pretty quick. This isn't a mock-up. This isn't, we gotta pull this apart and redo this. This is done and getting ready to actually seal it up and wrap it up, right? Yeah, we're gonna finish it up and then take it to the shop and dine on So I totally believe you could have this done probably within the next hour, but you wanna like do just a little bit more work maybe and then like finish it tomorrow. We still have a whole nother day of the show. Yeah, let's do that. Let's at least get the valve covers on it and make it look like a complete engine. I feel like maybe I can help with the last finishing touches. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and put the manifold on it okay. first. It's pretty easy. I got the bolts in it already. It's looking good. I think it is so exciting and so neat that somebody is going to receive a 1500 horsepower engine with all the good internal built and ready to go. But if you were going to, what would be your ideal application for this for yourself? I'd probably put it in something older and keep it more uh, pro touring. I kind of like pro touring stuff. I like drag racing. I like all types of racing, obviously. But uh, I like a little bit of street, all purpose kind of stuff. So. These are some nice valve covers. Do you guys machine them in-house? Yes, we machine all of our billet stuff in-house. Good. All right, so um, this is looking really great. I mean, we definitely just did all this work, you know? Um, so anyways, you have spark plugs to put in. I haven't eaten in like, I don't know, hours. So I'm gonna probably go find a snack. You do your thing. And tomorrow, day three, I think I have a surprise. Might bring some boost in with me when I, when I come over. Sounds good, that's what that we need. Okay, so you do good work. I'm gonna go do good work and we'll touch base tomorrow. Perfect. Perfect. Day three of the PRI show, last and final day. Yesterday we almost wrapped up the engine, but today I'm bringing in the crowning jewel for Vinny, so that way we can make our 1500 horsepower engine a 1500 horsepower engine. Vinny, check it out, supercharged, final piece. Can we, get, can, can, can we bolt it up? Let's button it up. Right now? Right now. Okay, I feel like you need my help though. I probably need some help on this, it's pretty heavy. You want the muscles, the yeah. strong arms? Okay, put it over here. So, I brought the good stuff, got you all set up. I think I'm going to peel off, let you get this set up, and then I'll come back to do the final touch. So that way we can wrap it up and give this engine away. All right, sounds good, I'll get it ready. This is gonna be a cog drive system. So this incorporates a tensioner and everything in this bracket, which is, it's a really nice package, super easy to put together. Vinny, what happened here? I finished it up. I thought you were gonna call me when you were ready to put this on. I couldn't wait. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it looks super good and I'm very impressed. Definitely 1500 horsepower capable now. For sure. Awesome, so it's very cool that this was able to be built live on the show floor and it's gonna be given away. Yeah, it's been a crazy experience. So awesome to be able to do it with all the manufacturers right here in one place, PRI. If you guys wanna see more of this, 
maybe not miss an opportunity to win an engine, uh, head over to Engine Labs and check it out. As you just saw, we put together an incredible engine live on the PRI show floor. On January 15th of the year, we drew the name of winner, Celeste Haskins. Given the option of running the Vortec V30 105A that you just saw us use, or a V7 YSIB. Celeste did something none of us really expected. She chose the smaller blower. Her reasoning makes perfect sense. She's got a Buick Roadmaster street strip project car that she actually plans to drive to and from the track. But this caused us a few delays in getting all the new parts. The V30 105A supercharger is a 105 millimeter cog driven race blower capable of about 1700 horsepower at full tilt. The YSIB, on the other hand, is a 94 millimeter blower that comes with a 10 rib serpentine belt drive system. Even with its billet impeller, the YSIB rated is somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 horsepower less. In addition to the smaller supercharger, Celeste opted for the C5 C6 Corvette front engine drive. This puts the blower in about the same location, but reversed and tucked in for a little bit more engine bay clearance in her Roadmaster. So while the engine we built is more than capable of supporting the advertised 1500 horsepower, we're going to have to revise our expectations a little bit since she did opt for a 94 millimeter blower instead of the big old 105. If Celeste ever decides she wants more than the 11 pounds of boost the YSIB kit is pulling for, she can upgrade to a full race cog drive setup and spin the thing to the moon. So with that, let's head to LME and see what kind of numbers we're going to put on the dyno.